magically wave a magic wand on each area of math that your students were struggling in, would you? Of course. We want all of our students to succeed. And there's a simple method out there that's going to get results each and every time. And in this video, I'm going to share how you can get those results for your students by using one simple tool so that all of your students improve their math scores in just a month. Hi, my name is Joanne Kaminsky, and many people know me as an online reading tutor, but I have also been a classroom math teacher and have tutored kids in elementary math since 2011. I knew when I started my tutoring business that I would need a way to market my business and that I would not be able to market it to everyone. So I chose my first love reading. But in second place comes tutoring elementary students in math. And did you know that 40% of students that struggle with reading also struggle with math? I wanted to be able to help these kids so that they could succeed in all areas that they needed tutoring in. So I began thinking of how I could do that with reading in math. And for those of you that don't know my reading strategy, I find out exactly where the gaps are and teach specifically to those areas. I was able to close a reading gap a full year with only eight to 12 hours of instruction and I wanted to be able to get those same kinds of results with math. But there are so many different areas of math and in the beginning it felt overwhelming to use that strategy until I put two pieces of information together. Now first I needed to find an assessment that would measure all of the areas in math and give me grade level information so that I could provide the right resources to find the gap. Finding the right assessment was no easy task, but finally I heard other math tutors were using the Adam assessment from Let's Go Learn. Now you can click on a link to learn more about this assessment from the company and an interview that I did with them. And as soon as I figured out how to use it and read the result, which was a little tricky at first, I was completely amazed at what I learned. I was able to look at every single strand and math skill and teach it directly to my students at that level. And knowing this information is similar to a doctor giving a test to find out where the cancer in the body is and then doing surgery to remove it. But in our case, we're figuring out where the gaps are and then putting the skills in place for the child so that they can successfully master those skills. And when you have targeted instruction like this, the students' math scores go up even if you're not helping them with their homework. And kids become more confident and they no longer say things like, math just isn't my thing. I am never going to be good at math or they're dreaded, when will I ever use this? Or even worse, when they use the H word when they talk about math. You know the one I'm talking about? H-A-T-E, oh, just spelling it makes me cringe. So let me show you the exact tools that I've been using. So recently I did an assessment with one of my students and we can take a look here that he, when you take a look here, it says that he had a hard time with fractions representing and comparing fractions with like denominators or numerators. Well, this is really important because when I see this information, I can then begin to now implement a plan to help him with this. I mean, it tells me the exact skill in what I need to do. Now, the cool thing is, after I'm done teaching the skill and he's mastered the skill, I can go on to the next skill so that I can continue to help him if I wanted to, or I could I could attack the last one. Now this kid, oh you guys, he's pretty incredible. He is only five years old and he is at a 2.3 grade level with the skill, not bad. So let's take a look now at what am I gonna do to specifically help him, right? Well, I could use IXL to do that. And so what we do is I go to the second grade math because that's where he's at in the skill. See, this doesn't even have to be for struggling learners, right? So the student that I'm working with, he's not a struggling learner whatsoever. His dad just wants to give him the upper hand. But this works with struggling learners too, and I use it all the time with them. So this kiddo, even though he's only five, is in second grade math with this skill. So I can come to that skill of fractions with like denominators, and I can take a look. Okay, it says um, fractions, order fractions with like denominators. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my gosh, don't you love it? I so love it. Look at this. This one has comparing fractions using models. So I could start right there before I go to then going into ordering it with it because I want him to actually see that visual piece of it. And there's even tools that I can use online where I could, 
I could teach this skill if this isn't working for him. Now, sometimes you, you can use a tool like this and it's going to work perfectly for them. And then other times you're going to use a tool like this. They're still not going to get it. And you want to make it a little bit more hands on. You can use some virtual manipulatives to make that happen. Now, I am on a program called Zoom right now. This is the same exact program I use with my students. I can share the remote control with my students and they can um, play around with these different things. So when we take a look here, we are actually able to see, right, which fraction is greater. When I take a look here, you can see that four eighths is more than one eighth. And so we can easily click on four eighths as our answer and submit. And then it's gonna give another and another problem. Now, here's something that's really neat and outstanding about this program because it actually will go through step by step if you get the answer wrong. So this is asking which fraction is less. Let's say I pick three eighths. I say three eighths is less. And then I, I submit that. It actually goes through an explanation and how I can explain it to the students. So I could say, okay, so let's take a look here. Two out of eight equal parts here are colored. But if we take a look here, three out of eight equal parts are colored. So both shapes have eight parts. They're both the same size, but the parts in the first shapes are the same size as the parts in the second shape. So when parts are the same size, two parts is less than three parts. So less of the first shape is colored. So two eighths is less than three eighths. And if the student is nodding along, like, oh, yeah, got it, then I can just click got it. If I see that there's more confusion, I can now add in some hands-on manipulatives to be able to get the point across a little bit more for them. But this is, I, I absolutely love being able to marry the two tools of being able to use um, the Atom assessment and then IXL to be able to find where the gaps are because it specifically tells me where they are struggling. Now, if I take a look at my Adam assessment again, I could take a look and I can say, okay, which area seems to be at the lowest grade level? If I want to organize it that way, like, let's close like the, the most needed gaps first in order to do this. I can take a look and I can see uh, all of them are around a 2.5. There was one that was like at a first grade level, I think it was place value when we were taking a look at place value. So I've highlighted, this is my own highlight. I highlighted that there so that I could, uh, these would stick out to me. Yeah, place value was at a 1.9. So again, it says that he will be able to identify place value in two digit numbers. Well, the interesting thing is if we do come to that, we talked about it, so we need to review it. So he learned that skill with me, but he didn't hold on to that skill. And sometimes kids just need some review with that. So if I go back to the first grade math, I'm just gonna click math here. I can now go back to the first grade math. So I'm gonna click first grade and I am going to go to place value. So here we've got place value models right here. And now we can start taking a look and, and, and calling these things what they are. Um, now we are at, this is the first grade level. So we wanna make sure, I wanna make sure that he does each of the activities and this, even if he's doing really well with it, I really wanna like hone in on this. And then we could take a look Look at all, I love how like I can just like scan over it and it shows me what kind of problems we're gonna be dealing with. And again, you can see here, we are dealing with some manipulatives, right? So there are lots of tools online uh, that you can share to be able to get um, to do that. Now you guys, on November 14th, 16th, and the 21st, I'm gonna be do a, doing a free training on how to specifically teach math online. You're going to be able to learn more specifically how to close the math gaps for students with different tools and resources that are available and become more familiar with ways to teach different concepts. To join us, all you have to do is sign up using the link below in the description. Now, if you like the information in this video, please hit like, subscribe, and that little bell so that I can create more content just like it and you get notified when it comes out. So let's help kids realize that being good at math is something that you become, not something that you are. I'm Joanne Kaminsky, the online tutor business coach, helping you get found, hired, and referred. Till next time, bye everyone.